it's time to check Adam's voicemail. Hey, Ace Man, just saw a commercial for COVID obesity issues. If you're obese, COVID could be a problem. What's the solution? Gastric bypass surgery. Not diet, not exercise, not lifestyle. Knew you'd love it. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Dr. Andrew Huberman is here. He's a professor, neurobiology is a specialty, has a, a podcast called uh, Huberman Lab, and uh, they bring on experts and they do science-based tools. And um, I, I don't know, this is a big, everyone's excited to see you here, Andrew. Everyone's a fan. Oh, thanks. I'm excited to be here. I'm a longtime fan of yours when I was in college. Mm-hmm. As a budding neuroscientist, I lived in a little studio apartment and I had very few human interactions, but one of the consistent interactions was with you and Dr. Drew on, on Love Line. And I'm just going to say that <sighs> at least my generation benefited tremendously from all the information on sexual health, um, even though it was at a time when uh, discussions about that were, were uh, pretty scarce. You guys um, broke, broke through a lot of uh, barriers. And I think, um, I don't know what it's like for the younger generation now, but I just want to say thank you. Well, you're welcome, and thanks for listening. Was on Live 105. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're out in Chicago? Was no, it was Bay, Bay Area. Area. Oh, Bay Area. But in college in Southern California, and I think I used to watch the show. There was a show, yeah, too, MTV. right? Yeah, Well, you know, all right, well, let's talk about the, the connection, because I, I didn't read books, and I didn't have that ability, really, but I always listened to a lot of talk radio, and then when I was working uh, oftentimes alone on job sites when I was swinging a hammer, I always had that radio. It was like, it was like a friend, like I had that mm-hmm. voice. I could hear these people. And, you know, I always thought, and the reason I did this podcast is because I thought in radio, you really have this connection. It's not like when a sitcom goes off the air after seven seasons or three seasons. Like It's a real relationship. And people get pretty devastated when the relationship ends. And when I was signing off on terrestrial radio after 13, 14 years of that, I just said, if if anyone if this is important to anybody you can go to the computer and you can find me and i don't expect it to be important to the vast majority of you but for the percent that needs it you can find it but there's a connection and is it is is it transcend the visual i mean does the visual in a, in a way lessen it to some degree like a sitcom or something like that yeah so you know obviously we have all these different senses and we Bring those senses come into our nervous system. And I can just say that, you know, the nervous system's main job is to make predictions about what's going to happen next. And it does that primarily through these five senses and et cetera. But to your point, the experience of hearing somebody's voice over and over and over is very much like the real world experience of being there with them. Whereas the visual on a screen, you know, looking at a television show or seeing a movie it's so far and away different than the experience of seeing that person in real life. So as I'm hearing your voice now, there are without question, little neurons in my brain that are tuned to Adam Carolla's voice based on the many hours that I've listened, but probably very few neurons that are tuned to your physical presence because it's the first time we've ever met. So much so that there's actually a paper published in the journal Nature, which is our, it's the Super Bowl of scientific publishing, most stringent paper. And they've recorded directly from the neurons of humans and shown them the images of different faces, including famous people's faces. And in this, they found in that paper, it's as well documented now, there was one individual who had a neuron, a nerve cell that responded only and specifically to the face of Jennifer Aniston. Mm -hmm. And in our field of neuroscience, this has become textbook material and they're so-called Jennifer Aniston neurons. Mm -hmm. And there is without question in my brain, a Adam Carolla neuron, whereas you don't have an Andrew Huberman neuron, right? If we meet again at some future time, and maybe if I have enough of an impact on you today, you would, but I have a neuron representing you. You don't have a neuron representing me, but every individual that listens- Sounds like you're breaking up with me or I'm breaking (laughs) up with you. (laughs) I think you're right. He's trying to let himself down easy. (laughs) Well, I guess what we're both saying is that we're in a relationship we didn't realize we were in, but there, you have a, a, there is no question that there are millions of individuals out there, if they listen to Loveline more than two or three times, they have a map of your voice in their head. Mm. That map is 
typically quiet unless they hear something that reminds them of you or hear you. Mm. So um, basically what I did is just threw a lot of neuroscience um, geek speak uh, to validate what you said, but I didn't do it to validate you. This is a well-documented phenomenon. 